Hello everyone. In this video presentation, we will go over an introduction to motion programs using a Power PMAC motion controller. A motion program is typically a series of moves associated with axes definitions of a coordinate system or kinematic relationships tied to physical motors and actuators. Motion programs are a means of carrying out specific functions that a system requires, such as picking up and placing an item on a conveyor belt. They are used in many industrial motion control applications, such as those seen in this list, especially those requiring coordination among multiple axes to control one or more tooltip or end effectors. In the ensuing sections, we will learn how to create a new motion program or add an existing one, assign and store axes definitions, do point-to-point -point square and circle moves, and use in-program gather buffer commands to view selected criteria. If you have an existing motion program from a previous solution, it is easy to import it into the current IDE project. Simply right-click on motion programs, click add, existing item, and browse to the location of the desired motion program and add it. To create a new motion program, right-click on Motion Programs, click Add, New Item, give the file a name, and add it. For new motion program files, the IDE editor provides a commented out template of a motion program structure. Feel free to reformat it to your preference and give the motion program a name or valid number of your choosing. Note that the motion program name or number is what really matters. The file name is irrelevant to PMAC. The hands-on examples will involve three types of move modes, rapid, linear, and circle moves. To execute a motion program, axis assignments must first be declared in a coordinate system. This is typically done in a global includes file or through the IDE setup tool using the system folder found in the project tree. For a motion program to run, all the motors in a coordinate system must be homed and in a closed loop state. Before I can run program 1, I must first download it to PMAC. After ensuring the download is successful and has no errors, check the status window to see if the motors in your coordinate system are in closed loop control and homed. With the motors ready to go, I can now open the plot tool and place motor 1's commanded position in the left axis with respect to time on the horizontal axis. A motion program must run in a coordinate system. To run the motion program from the terminal, issue AND1B1R. When the program runs, it scans through the code in a line-by-line -line fashion. The first line of the program executes an absolute rapid move with respect to the zero position of the coordinate system, thus commanding the motor to go to the zero location. Rapid moves are used when coordination among axes is unimportant. Gather.enable equals 2 starts gathering data. The next line specifies a linear move with motion profile parameters such as acceleration, jerk, and velocity feed rate. Linear moves are useful for straight line point-to-point -point moves that allow for blending between moves. The program then commands a series of absolute linear moves that move at the acceleration and velocity established by TA, TS, and F. Move commands are issued by listing the axis or axes we want to move followed by the desired distance or endpoint, depending on if we are in incremental or absolute mode. Gather.enable equals zero stops gathering the program data. Now let's run the program and take a look at the plot. This graph displays velocity in purple and position in red. The dwell between linear moves can be seen here as the motor is idle just before beginning the next move. The plot thus illustrates two sequential 10mm x-axis moves as designed by the program. On the velocity profile, we see that the motor takes 200 milliseconds to accelerate as specified by TA. Since TS is zero, it doesn't extend the acceleration time or add any S-curvature for smoother motion. As declared by the feed rate, the velocity reaches 20 mm per second at the peak of each move. 
With my Square program already downloaded a PMAC, I'm going to set up the plot tool to view the output of my program. As per my axis assignments, Motor 2's commanded position will be on the vertical axis as it represents the Y direction, and Motor 1's commanded position will be on the horizontal axis as it represents the X direction. Using what we've learned from earlier, let's draw a square with chord 1 dot no blend equals 0. This is the default value for the parameter that enables blending. The corners of our square will now be smoothened out with an arc type of motion that blends the end of one move into the beginning of the next move. The program consists of a few linear moves. The first command moves the motor to an absolute location of 50, 50 in the X and Y space. Next we start gathering the plot data and begin to perform the actual square move by doing a series of linear moves that draw a 50 by 50 millimeter square. With chord 1.noblend equal to 0, the plot shows a square with walls that are 50 millimeters long and 50 millimeters wide with the corners of the square blended, giving it a smooth profile along the edges. By changing the value of chord 1.noblend to 1, blending is disabled and the square move keeps its sharp corners. Due to chord 1.noblend equal to 1, in this new plot the square has sharp corners at the edges between moves, meaning that the motor has to come to a stop before beginning the next linear move. This example contains a circle program. Set up the plot tool to view the output of the axes moves. Before a circle can be drawn, PMAC must be placed in segmentation mode by setting chord1.segmovetime to a value greater than 0. It cannot be less than sys.servo period. Segmovetime specifies in milliseconds how often a new arc segment is computed, effectively controlling the resolution of a circle. The shorter the time, the better the resolution the circle will be. However, finer resolution comes at a trade-off for a higher computational time for systems that have load constraints. Typical values for seg move time are 10 to 20 times the servo period. The program first issues a rapid move to an absolute x and y starting point on this circle. Next, the program selects absolute as the position mode for the center point coordinates established by the i and j vector at the end of the line. For the endpoint coordinates, absolute is specified as the position mode. Then a normal vector is selected for the plane our 2D circle will be drawn on. Circle 2 tells the motors to draw a circle in the counterclockwise direction, however the direction can change depending on the plane identified by the normal vector. And lastly, TM designates a time in which PMAC will select the speed the motors move at so that the program move meets the total move time constraint. Here is an illustration of what the plot should look like after we run the program. After running the program from the terminal, the plot displays the data. We can see that the starting location, center point coordinates, and end point coordinates all match the commands from the motion program file. The circle is drawn counterclockwise from the starting point until it reaches the end point coordinates. Note that the placement of the center point coordinates determine the radius of the circle in reference to its starting point location. Looking at the circle plot's velocity versus time profile, we see that the entire circle finishes in precisely one second. This is given by the total move time parameters in the program with TA taking 200 milliseconds to accelerate and TM taking 800 milliseconds, thus giving a total of a one second circle move. And for some final remarks, the list prog command allows you to view the contents of a motion program from the terminal environment. As for G-code, it can be implemented in PMAC with subprograms. Below is an example of a motion program that calls out a move using G-code. Next are abort commands. Ampersand 1A will abort a motion program and coordinate system 1. Ampersand asterisk A will abort any motion program running in all coordinate systems. Also worth noting, a motion program can run in up to 128 coordinate systems simultaneously as long as they each have their own separate motors. Below is an example of the same motion program being called from two different coordinate systems. Deleting the contents of a program can be done from the terminal by issuing open prog, the program number, and then the close statement.
And lastly, the CPX command lets users run a program command in a coordinate system from the terminal without having to download and run a full program. We hope that this video has given you a good introduction to creating and executing your first motion program. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact your local Omron representative.